Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I'm continuing my shuttle constructed Mars mission. We are back to launching shuttles after using Energia twice in the previous episode in order to refuel the mission currently around the moon. And in this launch we are launching the Orion spacecraft with a service module. Now, the Orion spacecraft didn't really fit in the shell cargo bay normally and the diameter of the service module was just too big to fit in the shuttle cargo bay. So I had to make a custom service module, though I kept the AJ-10-190 engine that's supposed to be on the Orion service module intact. Um, but, uh, well, you'll have to see how I put everything inside the bay as it is. Uh, I didn't realize that Orion had that much diameter to it. Um, really, I probably should be using just a Dragon 2 and a custom service module for that. But, uh, well, people wanted to see Orion, so I decided to put Orion. Orion is a thing. I mean, it's a spacecraft that is ready to go. It's just sort of waiting for a launcher at this point. So, anyway, here we are. We did get to launch from Launch Pad 39A again after having some issues with that previously. I don't know why we had issues previously, but it just happened. <laughs> so, but this time it worked out fine, so great. And here we go. So... After separating the external tank there and doing the OMS burns, of course, we open up the cargo bay and you'll see what I did. You'll The Orion is tilted in the back of the cargo bay. It's on a docking port, but it had to be tilted to fit in. And the service module placed separately and we are actually going to have to dock them together. Now, the shuttle would, of course, use cannon arm to put them together or something like that. Uh, well, I don't know. You'd have to have like two cannon arms to do it. I'm not sure. But, uh, yep, so here we go, getting that service module out of the cargo bay. I used the uh, Orion solar panels, and again, the same engine, and the same RCS ports, so... Though I think it's overall lighter, because we couldn't carry the full fueled service module anyway. We would have to have underfueled the Orion service module to have the shuttle lift everything up. So, oh well, no, that's not true. Uh, it's actually to transfer it to the moon that we can't have the full service module, I think. I'd have to check the masses. Anyway, so Orion gets popped out, the service module rendezvous with it, and grabs it. Thankfully, this wasn't too painful. Well, it wasn't too painful to get them close together. Docking, though, turned out to be a problem, and the reason for that is the fairings around the docking port on the service module. They sort of got in the way. And you'll be able to see that here. We do have a good connection, but it just wasn't docking. Initially, I wasn't sure whether it was the fairings or the rotation. So I was trying to fix the rotation, that stupid docking port snap thing. But um, you can see that there's a gap between the docking ports and it's clear that the fairings are sort of getting in the way. So ultimately, I had to remove the fairings. Not the, not the best look, especially since I had shifted up RCS ports so that they looked like they were on the fairing. And when we separate the fairing, eventually, yeah, there we go. Uh, the RCS ports look like they're floating in mid-air or in mid-space. So that's not great. But anyway, at least things docked together and we were sort of ready to go. There's nobody on board the Orion at that point. And we're just leaving it in space with its hypergolic fuels, because they're storable. And we need to bring up a Centaur stage now, and dock the Centaur stage to the Orion mission, so that the Centaur stage can boost the Orion mission to the moon. But anyway, of course, we have to bring the shuttle back. This is one of the plus sides of using Energia. You don't have to bring a shuttle back. Um, that's certainly more time-friendly and uh, time-efficient. But anyway, here we go. This time I think I was more or less on course and everything was fine. So just as a reminder, we're not trying to land on Mars with this right now. We just wanted to test the Delta V requirements for transferring the mission to Mars and bringing it back. And for that we didn't really need the Orion capsule either. We could send Orion to the mission after it comes back from Mars. If we wanted to retrieve the Kerbals at that point, it doesn't need to carry Orion all the way to Mars but they wanted to have Orion go for some reason. So, so that's why we're sending Orion over there. And technically, uh, we wouldn't 
yeah, there's there's no reason to carry Orion out all, all the way out there. Uh, Orion can just rendezvous with the mission when it captures into Earth orbit when it gets back, or even if it fails to, they could send an Orion on a, on a rendezvous trajectory to dock with it as it is on a flyby of Earth because it failed to capture and still grab the crew like that, though that's obviously more intense. Anyway, here we are landing the shuttle. Not the greatest lineup ever, but I was trying to get rid of some velocity ahead of the runway. Uh, somebody mentioned that they had a split tail, um, what you call it, uh, break. I'll, uh, if, if that gets linked, I'll take a look at it. Having landed this, we now have to launch the Centaur G. And this is not like the Centaur G primes that we've used on previous missions. The Centaur G primes are smaller and they can basically send about 10 tons over to the moon. That would not be enough for Orion, but they can fit along with the 10 tons in the cargo bay of the shuttle. This uh, cannot fit with uh, additional heavy payload in the shuttle. It could carry a small probe to like Jupiter or something, but for moon missions, uh, it would have to be carried separately from the payload, and that's what we're doing here. So, but it can transfer more than 10 tons over the moon. It's like uh, 15 tons or something like that. And again, that's why we would have to underfuel the Orion service module in order to make the transfer happen. Uh, in any case, the Orion service module is going to have to finish the translunar injection burn on its own. And the service module is also responsible for capturing around the moon and rendezvousing with the mission. Uh, that's going to have to change though, as I'll soon explain. As we separate off the external tank, the thing is, we first have to rendezvous with the Orion spacecraft, and that takes time. And it took more time than I should have taken. I, instead of optimizing for inclination, I should have probably optimized for our distance between us and the target on launch. So even if we had to have a higher inclination difference, that would have made the rendezvous quicker. And that would have been good because as this was, we had a whole lot of boil off. Lots and lots of boil off of the hydrogen. So we weren't carrying as much Delta V when we finally got it docked to the Orion. And that meant that we really didn't have enough fuel to do what I wanted to do. And that's gonna cause all sorts of problems. Another solution, of course, is to use something like an ACES stage with active cooling so it doesn't have so much boil off. But for now, we are using these centaurs that were meant for use with the shuttle. And there it goes out of the cargo bay. Basically, the mass of it is pretty close to the shuttle's capacity. Again, it uh, could accommodate a payload to somewhere like Jupiter, in which case it'd be like three tons of payload or something like that. Um, then that payload could fit in the cargo bay as well. I did dump the surplus liquid oxygen since we had the hydrogen boil off, and so the fuel has been rebalanced in the Centaur. As we see here, the Orion handling the docking. And of course we have the rotational thingy. Centaur really shouldn't be puffing its RCS. Anyway, but all docked together, it's pretty clear. The Delta V reading is incorrect right now. And maybe it's a little bit, well, I don't know if that uh, total delta V at the bottom there was ever accurate. But uh, we try it anyway, and there's the ignition of the Centaur G stage. Trying to send this Orion spacecraft and its service module over to the moon. Unfortunately, of course, it falls short because of the boil off, and we can see the remaining delta V at the maneuver as the Centaur completes its burn and the RCS is not going to help very much, so we have to just try and use the service module. Unfortunately, the maneuver reset on me, so we had to uh, replot that. But basically, after the maneuver, the service module is not going to have a whole lot more Delta V to spare. Thankfully, there was always a backup plan. As we see here, it has a tiny little bit of Delta V left after we actually get our trajectory to the moon. And there's gonna need to be a mid-course adjustment so that we make sure that we get into the same plane as the Mars mission. But here we go. Uh, the correction is only 18 meters per second. The backup plan is to use the tugs currently on the station, which have been fully fueled thanks to the Energia refueling missions in the previous episode. So 
They have fuel, but they were only ever meant to ca uh, get six tons into orbit around the moon. Uh, they really don't have enough fuel to handle Orion. But anyway, I deploy one and see what I can do with it. Uh, first of all, it's going to have to use a chunk of its fuel just to rendezvous with Orion, which is currently, of course, on an escape trajectory around the moon. It's on a lunar flyby. So that's this huge burn here as I try and slow down to match, well, actually speed up to match the target and catch up to it as it's trying to fly by. That puts this tug on an escape trajectory around the moon uh, back into Earth space, so... Or actually, it might even uh, go interplanetary. So we need to do some more burning in order to bring it back in after we dock up with Orion here. Thankfully, it was a better time of the month to go over to the moon, and that's because our periapsis with Orion was close to the periapsis of the Mars mission. And that sort of radial difference meant that it was easier to get to the Orion capsule and its service module and also easier to subsequently rendezvous with the Mars mission again. But still the tug didn't have quite enough Delta V and we are going to need to deploy the second tug in order to help it out. But basically that is how things are right there. And the Delta V reading at the bottom isn't telling me how much Delta V I have so I didn't really know at this point that I would need to deploy the second tug. I was just hoping that I would have enough. I didn't calculate it out. It turns out I was able to do most of that burn, but just not quite enough. But because the tug, the Orion, and its service module were in such a high orbit around the moon, it's going to take a little bit of time for them to get to where they're going to do the velocity matching burn with the Mars mission. So I have to bring the shuttle back down because it was running out of supplies. And of course, you know, it's just a good idea to bring the shuttle back down. Frankly, we probably should have brought it back down while the other mission was on its way to the moon anyway. Uh, I was probably chatting a little bit too much with my Twitch audience because I sort of overshot where I should have started this turn to bring the shuttle into Cape Canaveral. I, I know when I'm supposed to take care of that. And so uh, I went a little bit too far. So even though I desperately tried to pull G-forces to correct that, we ended up in a splashdown situation just shy of Cape Canaveral. I don't know the exact distance, but you can see our coordinates at the bottom there. So basically, uh, Cape Canaveral is at 28.6 degrees north and 80.6 degrees west for reference. So that's how far off we are. But uh, yeah, splashdown. Shuttle still splashes down fine, thankfully. And we were able to recover. So here it is with the two tugs. Unfortunately, I didn't record the bit where I sent the second tug out to it. That wasn't too hard anyway. And now I had balanced the fuel between the two tugs and we are bringing all of it back into the mission. The Orion service module still has some of its fuel left. I deliberately kept some fuel to make sure that it could handle docking on its own. And so now we have to do three separate dockings, one tug, the Orion and then the other tug. I decided to have the tug that's closer to Orion just uh, hang out off to the side while Orion is docking just in case Orion needs its help. But here's the first tug coming in. I'm sort of happy that uh, I added textures unlimited configuration for these little tugs and again I have made the other version that has four engines facing downward so that uh, for heavier loads. But yeah, it makes the tug a little bit shinier thanks to Textures Unlimited's PBR shaders. And I hope to add that to more of the parts that I've made. I would love to add the shaders to other parts, but I have to know what those parts were named in Blender. Not, you know, in Unity or KSP, but the actual model name. Sometimes it's just part of a part, if you will. Uh, it is one of the meshes that comprise the part. They each have their own names and I need to know that name in order to apply the PBR shader. So it's tough to patch other people's parts to add the shaders to them. But that would be nice. Anyway, Orion docked just fine and here we are bringing in the second tug. And with this finally we'll be able to uh, set out hopefully. At first, uh, for this live stream, I decided to zip up the save and do sort of a test run with the ion drive burns because 
I really don't know how to do these burns correctly. Yeah, people talk about spiraling out like it's trivial, but planning out these sort of ion burn maneuvers is not obvious. Of course, the thrust is not being applied instantaneously, which is how normal maneuvers in KSB are assumed to be, right? And of course, none of the maneuvers are actually done instantaneously. But with an ion drive, the inaccuracies are, you know, huge. So um, I've got a bit of a problem there in just planning these maneuvers out. And I need to figure out some rules, basically. So here we are spiraling out. I mean, you can see the apoapsis and periapsis changing as I have added the ability to apply thrust during time warp with this and that's managed by KSP Interstellar but you have to add the that capability part by part so I've only added it to these lackluster labs ion engines that I personally configured to match ion engine characteristics but you see here as we're spiraling out it left us on a trajectory out that wasn't quite right. It's actually bringing us inside the moon's orbit instead of outside the moon's orbit, instead of higher up. And obviously we lost some fuel like that. That was the wrong way around. And here again, it's not quite where I want it to be. At least it's pointed towards Mars and not like inward towards Venus. But I plot a correction burn there and you can see 2,000 meters per second, obviously that's horrible. From the height of the moon, the burnout to Mars should be not more than 1,000 meters per second if we were using the methane and oxygen, for instance, and probably I should have. But uh, here we're trying to do a correction burn. The mission started off with 11,000 delta V, meters per second of delta V, and now it's just not as much. And this is much more than it's supposed to take, so I'm doing something horribly wrong. Lots of things horribly wrong. So I'm gonna have to revert this sequence of burns. This was explicitly just trying it out and seeing how it's supposed to work, and probably I'll have to do this a few more times before I get it right. So that's going to be, I guess, in the next episode. We'll see how things work out. For now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.